Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Crusader Kings 2, the first episode of a brand new series using the Game of Thrones mod and set during the Dance of Dragons. For those of you who may not know, HBO is producing a Game of Thrones spin-off series called House of Dragons, which will be set in this same time period, and it's about this huge dragon-based civil war that happens during the Targaryen rule. With all the recent news about that series that's come out, you know, casting decisions and so on, I thought now would be a good time to, you know, really get stuck in and do a series that I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm really looking forward to House of Dragons, even though I do have some reservations because of the way Game of Thrones ended in its last two series. Uh, and I'm also really looking forward to getting stuck into this series. Uh, like I said, it's my it was my favourite time period to read about, uh, bar the actual series itself and you know what's not to love about a civil war that has huge monstrous dragons tearing into each other every five minutes so we're playing as lady rhaenyra targaryen who is the daughter and oldest child of the previous king viserys and was named heir despite westeros having a tradition of the eldest son inheriting everything however when king viserys this guy died one morning Rhaenyra was not in King's Landing. She was heavily pregnant on Dragonstone and wasn't informed of it until, well, later. Um, her absence allowed her stepmother Alicent to crown Aegon, her younger brother, as king instead, um, which has led to the realm fracturing between the two factions and everyone going to war for one side or the other. As you can see, Rainier is not really the best person, nor the best at any particular thing. She's okay at diplomacy, surprisingly, if you know, and that's surprising if you read Fire and Blood and you know why. Um, and a marshal's not great either, although that doesn't tend to matter because we have because we have a dragon, which used to show up in relations, doesn't anymore. Don't know why. Um. But well, that basically negates the need to have good marshal for the most part. Now, while Rhaenyra herself may not be, you know, the best character to play as, the strengths of this faction come from the characters around her. Um, most importantly, this guy, Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince, and currently Rhaenyra's husband. And, you know, we're just going to gloss over the fact that uh, he's also her uncle and about two decades older than her because... You know, Targaryens, they're weird. Let's not get into it. This whole family tree is a big load of fuckity that I don't want to get into. At the minute, there's a lot of intermarriages between the Targs and the Valyrians. And I don't want to get sidetracked by discussing it too in depth. If you know, you know. If not, you should be able to follow anyway. I'll keep it simple. Additionally, um, we have more dragons. Than the, than the other side, Aegon's side. He has got four total, um, plus two little baby dragons for two of his kids. Um, he's got one, and all three of his siblings have one. We, on the other hand, have one for ourselves. Our husband has one. Our four eldest sons have one. One of Damon's daughters, Bela, has one. And she's betrothed to my heir as well. This guy, Adam Valerian, who is just one of the coolest characters in, in the book. Uh, he's also a dragon rider. And within our court, we also have three more dragon riders. This guy, Hugh Hammer. Uh, Nettles here. She is a dragon rider. And then so is this guy, Ulf White. Now, all four of the dragon riders that are not Targaryen. So Adam, Ulf, Hugh and Nettles are dragon seeds. So they're descended from Targaryen bastards from... You know, however far up the line you want to go. Uh, and they all came and claimed wild dragons um, in order to fight for our cause. So, you know, if we win, there might be some uh, some decent rewards in it for them. Now, oh, I've still got to do all this. Right, I'll go. I'll do all this off screen and then we'll jump into the, uh, you know, we'll click it off pause and click over to the first, first events. So I've done that. I've done ambition, the focus. I've uh, assigned all the guardians to all the children so that you can uh, I'll try and get the best out of them uh, sorted all my council and the minor titles 
sent everyone to do what I want them doing. So we'll jump right into it. My dear father, King Viserys is dead, and it was his wish that I am to follow him as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. The traitorous Lord Commander Kristen Cole of the Kingsguard, however, has seen fit to crown my half-brother Aegon. Now I must bring Dragonfire upon my blood to regain what is mine. Right, now this is a massive, massive plot point. And unfortunately for, for me, there is absolutely no way around this. This happens regardless. You have to send Luke uh, to Storm's End. Which ended badly in the uh, in the book and usually ends badly here I'm the blood of old Valyria just gonna raise my fleet get these guys to start marching down there I could raise all my men but I don't quite want to yet I'd like to uh, let them build up a little bit yeah. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. So, yeah, that is exactly what happens in canon and is exactly what I expected to happen here. Borrows the Blowhorn here, who, uh, you know, he's got big talk, but he's an absolute fucking wuss in the book, uh, has decided to join with Aegon. And the Stormlands are now my enemy, and Luke is in danger because... No, not hurt. This guy, Aemond One-Eye, is also at Storm's End, and he happens to have... He, he is the rider of the biggest dragon in the game, Vagar. The only dragon left alive from Aegon's original conquest of Westeros. At this point, I'm basically just... Hoping Luke survives. His dragon certainly did not. But it seems like he himself did. Right, and this shitty little army down here that annoyingly spawns got beaten. The place. The place. The palace is full of courtiers children running around there. For the most part, young ladies chasing a five-year-old son, trying to mount someone else's horse. The poor boy was quickly brought to tears, and was another Eric witness secretly bought from the stables a pony for the boy to ride. No, give him a broomstick as a lance, pretend to be dragged for the boy to joust against. The tears turned to laughter. All the witnesses fought. Well. Right, this is because I've got a uh, a King's Guard sub mod, which just does something for the King's Guard. Uh, makes gives it a bit more interaction. Eric the kind of Dragonstone. I'm just going to quickly get rid of them so they don't get completely wrecked by them there. Yep, that's the next thing then. Once I get these guys together up here. Just gonna have the fleet scope there, get ready to pick up this army. Mainly because uh Aegon here normally sends his army to Dragonstone straight off the bat and the uh nine to rest and another one to assassinate and help do it. Whatever. Doesn't matter. The three daughters down here uh, have also allied to Aegon, and they are, they're all, they're also a sea power, and they tend yeah here they are, and they tend to send a load of cell swords against me. Annoyingly, because it means I have to spend the first half of the war defending Dragonstone. That's fine. I'll be there with reinforcements soon. Merge them together. The Merryweathers join me. Bucklers, Fells, Caswells, Hayfords. Yeah, 
lot of allies. Merge them. Throw them on board and get them over here to Driftmark. I hope you don't marry nettles, but otherwise marry as you please. Right, do that. Add Corliss's men to the uh, to the effort. Wow, Ulf usually has a much higher thing than that. Oh no, wait, I'm thinking of Hugh. Never mind. Yep. Annoyingly, I can't put Adam as a commander yet because he's not yet 16. <laughs> okay. Uh, resist that. I mean, I don't want Damon killing me in my sleep for being unfaithful. Just raise the... Uh, some armies here and then send the fleet to go pick them up as well. While these guys can march across to Dragonstone and defend the castle. Choose how to educate Aegon. Uh, Mr. Depresso himself. Caught, you know, intrigue diplomacy. Yeah. And, yeah. That army's lack of dragons becomes quickly apparent. Zoklax. What a stupid name, Zoklax. Oh, well, we've got another dragon. I won't complain about the name. Well done, Reyna. Better than mourning, which is, you know, what you tell, what you call it in the books. A few more reinforcements there for me. They've got another army, red wines, and uh, let's go up there. Back to this again. Oh, Aegon is on Driftmark. So is Kristen. News from Driftmark, my lady. During the war in Dragonstone, the dragon riders Aegon II, rider of Sunfire, and Ulf White, rider of Silverwing, met in fierce combat. Driving their dragons to tear at each other relentlessly, Ulf and Silverwing prevailed, killing Sunfire. What a dance that must have been. Sunfire the Golden is killed by Silverwing. Unfortunately, this dragon hardly ever survives the war in this setting, which is a shame because, you know, the Golden Dragon is really fucking cool. It would have been nice to see it survive, but oh well, you had a bad rider. Aegon's all burnt up and injured, and I hope we manage to kill or capture him here. 